All right, let me have a look at this example here. Now, look, we've dealt with basically circuits like this that have got a voltage source between the two nodes, but this time we've got that four ohm resistor sitting here. So we've got to think about how do we deal with that? Well, look, first of all, let's define our nodes. We're going to have a V1 node sitting here. We're going to have a V2 node sitting over here. And of course, this guy over here is basically my reference node and that's sitting at zero volts. All right, now, well, maybe first of all, let's talk about this whole thing here really as a super node. So, and we'll write down basically a, a node equation really for that super node. So here we go, super node. All right, what's going in? Well, we've got one amp going in. What's coming out? We've got a minus, haven't we? And that's a V1 divided by 10. On the other side, I've got a minus V2, and that's divided by five, isn't it? And then I've got what, what happening over here? Yes, I've got a, a plus three, and all of that is equal to zero, right? Well, let's see if we can collect all our terms together. So I've got three and one, which is four. So four is actually equal to, I'm taking this and this to the other side, and I'll perform that division. So it's really equal to a 0.1, times V1, then I've got this to the other side, so that's a V2 divided by five, which is the same as a plus 0 0.2 times V2. And so we could say that yes, here I've got one equation in terms of V1 and V2. So now what do I do? Well, let's go ahead and define a voltage across that four ohm resistor, and we're gonna define it this way, plus, minus, and I'm gonna call that voltage Vx. And I'm gonna take a little loop here. So we're gonna do that. I'm gonna start going around the loop in this direction. So see what we get by way of an equation, loop. So going in this way, now I'm going to, the way I sum the voltages here, I'm gonna assume if I go up in voltage, I'm gonna call it positive, and if I go down in voltage, I'm gonna call it negative. As you know from previous discussions, we can do it the other way, and that's fine too. All right, so here we go. Going up in voltage, I'm gonna call that what, V1. Going up in voltage, it's a minus to a plus, I'm gonna call that plus Vx. And then I've got a plus 10. Then I'm dropping, so I've got a minus, have I not, V2, and all of that is really equal to zero, isn't it? So let's see if we can write this equation now in terms of Vx. Take everything else to the other side. So I can say Vx is equal to, what have I got? That would be a V2, V1 to the other side, that's a minus V1, and then the 10 to the other side is a minus 10. So there is my equation now for Vx. All right, now what? Well, let's focus on this node right here for a moment. And we'll say that's our V1 node, okay? And what we're gonna do here is we're gonna sum the currents right at this node here. Let's think about this. Because I define Vx plus minus, that means the current's going in this direction, yes? I'm gonna call that current Ix. Current going in this direction, so it's a plus Ix, yep. Current going in this direction, what is that? That's a minus V1, isn't it, divided by 10. And then of course this current's coming in, so that's really a plus one, and all of that is equal to zero. All right, so let me now write this equation here in terms of Ix. Well, if I do that, I can say Ix is going to be equal to, taking this to the other side, that's what? That's a V1, isn't it, over the 10, and, the, and that becomes a minus one, okay? So that's my expression for Ix. Yeah, okay. Now can I say something else about this? Can I not relate v and X, Vx and Ix together by way of what, that resistor? And can I not say that that Ix here is equal to what? It's equal to Vx, isn't it, divided by four. So I could say Ix is also equal to the Vx, is it not? and that's really divided by four, okay? But look, 
I have an expression, do I not, for Vx. So could I not substitute in there? Yes, and that's equal to what? That would be equal to V2 <coughs> minus V1 minus 10 divided by 4. Okay, so does this give me yet another equation in terms of V1 and V2? Well, yeah, it really does, because if I look at this as being equal to this, I could rewrite that, couldn't I? And I could say that that's what? Looking at this, that's really V2 minus V1 minus 10. All of that's divided by 4, and that's equal to what? The V1 divided by 10 minus 1. Okay, so let's see now if we can work on this, just simplify this. All right, V2 divided by 4, well, we can say that that is equal to 0 0.25 V2. Then I've got a minus, haven't I? Minus V1 divided by 4, so that's 0.25 V1. And I've got a minus 10 divided by 4, which is a minus 2.5. That's equal to, well, V1 divided by 10 is 0 0.1. V1, and then I've got my minus 1. Okay, what are we going to do now? So let me take this guy to the other side, um, and I'll write it over here. So I've got a minus 2.5, which becomes a plus 2.5, minus a 1, which gives me 1.5. That is equal to, all right, so how many V1s do we have? Well, I have a, point, a minus 0.25 V1 over here. Now, if I bring this V1 over to this side, that becomes a minus 0.1. So that's a minus 0 0.35 V1. And then, of course, I've got this V2 here. So that's a plus 0 0.25 V2. All right. So that's another equation, is it not, that we have in terms of V1 and V2. So here are the two equations. Now we're going to use these two equations really to solve for V1 and V2. All right. So look, what we could do here is we could take this first equation over here and we could multiply that guy by 5. And then we could take this second equation over here and we could multiply this guy by 4. All right. So if we do this, take the top one. What are 4 fives are what? 20. So 20 is equal to. So we're multiplying throughout by 5. So we get a 0 0.5 V1, and then of course we get 5 times 0.2, which just gives us a plus V2. All right, take the second equation, once again multiplying by 4. So 4 times 1.5 is 6, and that is equal to 4 times 0.35, that's going to be equal to a minus. 1.4 V1 and then of course what do I have here four times that just gives me a plus V2 all right so what are we going to do here well what we'll do is we'll take this guy away from this one so what do we have so we've got 20 minus 6 which gives me a 14 and that is equal to so if I think about this, I've got 0.5 minus a minus 1.4, which gives me a 1.9 V1. And then, of course, I've got a V2 minus a V2, so that's gone. Okay? So this enables me now to really find that V1. And so V1 is equal to this 14 divided by this 1.9, and that is equal to rounding a bit here, that is 7.37 volts. Okay, so we've got our V1. We can now find V2. We can use either one of those two equations to do that. So if we use the top one up here, we can say, all right, what have I got? I've got 4 is equal to 0 0.1 times the V1, which is this 7.37, okay? I've got plus 0 0.2 V2. So 
The only unknown in that equation then is what? V2. So I can say that that's 4. I'm going to take this bit to the other side. So that's a minus 0.1 of 7.37 is what? It's a 0 0.737. And I'm going to divide by that 0 0.2. That is equal to V2, and if we evaluate this over here, V2 is equal to 16.315. There is a bit of rounding there as well, okay? So this is basically how we had to deal with that problem. Yes, we took a super node, but we also had to take a little voltage loop in order to really solve this particular problem. All right, so have a think about this. Go through it yourself, and I'll see you next time.